Hi everyone, Billy here, Current Kick Games, and I've been playing Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, and yeah, I've played about three hours of it, and what an odd game from Team Ninja, the developer that brought us the Ninja Gaiden games and Neo 2, which I have yet to play. But yeah, this is a Souls-like action RPG set in the Final Fantasy universe of the first Final Fantasy game. It's not quite a remake or a prequel, but I guess more of a reimagining. There is multiplayer. I haven't messed around with that, and I honestly probably won't because I like to play my games solo. But I heard there's been some issues with that. But this is going to be my impressions of just playing the game for three hours, the first three missions. And uh, yeah, I mean, I said it's odd because first off, a Final Fantasy Souls-like, that's, that's weird, right? And this is a weird, strange game in general, at least from my experience playing this demo. It's fun enough, the combat feels decent, I had a fun time with it, having two party members makes it easier a bit. You don't have that dread around every corner of a Soulsborne game like Elden Ring, what I've been playing mostly lately, since you have two party members. I found the loop of running around and fighting monsters and gaining loot and leveling up to be fun. And I also found that boss fights were kind of difficult because I died pretty quickly. They're kind of cheap and cheesy until you figure out what to do, which is really just kind of dodge and block and then get your hits in when you can. And their HP gauge goes down pretty quickly. As for the main characters, the designs and their voices are fun. I actually like the design of all the characters, even the guy that's I mean, they all yell chaos, but I'm cool with him. What, what the hell is his name? Jack. The main character and the only playable one is Jack, followed by Ash, Jed, and Neon. It does have that Final Fantasy, I would say modern Final Fantasy, but I guess going back until like Final Fantasy X. Some voices are good, and a lot of the side characters that I heard are just terrible. They have that problem that many JRPGs and even anime dubs have, where they just sound like a weird baby or they're overacting and terrible and cringy i would say a lot of this game is cringy it's also clunky it sometimes looks like a really good ps3 game and other times like an okay ps4 game which neither of those is is a good thing there's a lot of performance issues especially in cutscenes. oh my god Backgrounds look really odd. I, I had some flickering problems with light and just warping of the graphics in general. Characters, especially like the, the whoever it was, the king character, they look like blurry and the graphics just look really outdated. I can't believe this is a game that's coming out in 2022, especially for a PS5. Like, ugh. That being said, in level, the game looks good enough that I didn't think about it. It looks fine just really really odd that it's coming out looking like this and performing like this I, I don't know if it's just the demo because the game is coming out in a few days here it's coming out on march 18th 2022 and of course if you pre-order you can get it early access on the 15th so i don't see how this wouldn't be a representation of the final game if it isn't that's kind of crazy that they let a demo like this come out but i guess we'll have to wait and see i mentioned clunky gameplay I mean, it's more clunky with the amount of things you can do in menus and things that you find loot-wise, but I kind of wish there was a jump. There's a dodge button, there's a block button, a guard button, there's a light bringer mode, which I'm still not 100% sure how that works. There's combos on R1 and then R2, and as you progress through your class, you unlock more abilities and you can kind of customize everything the way you want them to. You unlock abilities like a charge attack or a combo and but you can customize them any way you want. So you can do you can put a new ability requiring you to hit R1 and then holding R2 or hitting R1 twice and then hitting R2 to do the ability. So there's a lot of in-depth customization which is cool but also way overwhelming. There's just a lot going on always in Stranger of Paradise. By the time I got to the second level, I got more into a bit of a groove, but, oh man. There's going to be 27 classes. I kept unlocking more and more, and then I wound up seeing that, like, oh, you can even, like, if you upgrade to a certain point, you get a newer, better version of the class you were just using. An example is, I was using the Ronin 
class, which is kind of like a samurai using a katana and you can kind of sheath your blade and do a quick strike with it. And then I unlock samurai, which is very similar, but allows you to boost your MP regain because all the special abilities use MP and there's crazy systems going on that I still, like I said, I still don't quite get how they work. You basically, I believe if you just mash your regular attack, eventually you gain more MP back, but then there's different modes your character can go into that also gains MP back. But classes are cool. There, there's a lot of options. And now on Triangle, you can swap classes. You can put Jack set to two. So you can swap between two classes. Now, here's the problem that I encountered. Every time you unlock a new class, it starts at level one. Now, I found that the Pugilist was my favorite to play as. It's the it's basically attacking with fists and feet. I had that up to like level 18 or 19, something like that. And then I kept unlocking new and new classes, a sword fighter, and then the Ronin. And every time you unlock a new one, you start at level one. So you have to use it to unlock more ability points so you can gain new abilities and level up your damage and starting at level one when you're now fighting enemies that are like level 15 you're not as good you're not doing as much damage it's taking longer and now this started to get to me i was on the final level of the demo the third level i wanted to test out this new samurai class that i got but i kept getting killed really easily because i'm level one so it's like do you just stick with the class that's doing a lot of damage that you like to play as or like what do you do the whole second level i ran around as the ronin not doing as much damage as I could be doing because I wanted to level it up. And then by the time I got it close to the Pugilist, I unlocked the Samurai and started all over again. It's, I guess this game wants you to do, I don't know if you can replay missions, but I'm guessing they're going to want you to keep grinding because it's a Souls-like. So you could just save at the save point, reload all the enemies and kill them all over again, you know? And I've got to say that there's some quality of life improvements that I wish this had. In level, as far as I know, there's no map. And man, that's really annoying, especially one of the levels I was running through a cave system, like a crystal cave. And I kept getting turned around and running all the way back to the beginning of the level over and over again. And by the time I get back there, I figured, well, I should probably heal and upgrade my class. So all the enemies reappear. There were like spider webs that you slash out. So like those respawn. So now I'm like, oh my God, I, I don't know where I'm going. And I kept doing it over and over again, this like loop running back and back until I finally figured it out. And it's really annoying. Another annoying part is at this point in the game, I, I unlocked a third party member, Neon. But unfortunately you can only take two on your mission with you. And the member that isn't with you doesn't seem to level up at all. So Either you're going to play through a whole level and then see what happened with me is one character that I didn't use was like level 15 and everyone else was like in their 20s. So now I'm going to swap them in and go into the next mission with a character that's under leveled, not doing as much damage, making it easier for me to die. Or you can swap them out at save points. But there's so much time you spend in menus in this game. Do you want to spend time in a menu swapping out characters every single time? It, you're already doing it an insane amount of time during the demo in this game. Every time you gain loot, you go to the menu to upgrade your armor or your weapon. I mean, luckily there's an like an optimize button, but still you have to do that. It's like every time I find a chest or if an enemy drops some items, it's like every five minutes. I think it's a bit too much and it's a little overwhelming. All that being said, I did find myself playing more and more of the demo when I thought I was just going to give it like an hour and stop. And what's nice is that your progress will be carried over into the full game if you decide to buy it, which is cool. And like I said before, you know, they're pushing this demo, I guess, because if you pre-order, you get the game early. So I think that was their whole basis of putting this out so early to launch. I've been knee deep in Elden Ring and sometimes it takes its toll on me where I just need to take a break from it, only playing for an hour or two at a time, or maybe just like a half hour at a time, make it to the next side of grace and take a break. I was looking for a game to kind of let me mess around with when I want to play something but not necessarily dive into Elden Ring because I'm already 30 hours into that game and nowhere near the end. I'm probably going to be playing it for a couple months. I'm not going to rush through it. So this Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, I would play this, but I'm pretty positive that I'm not going to buy it right now, especially at full price. 
it's janky and clunky and kind of cringy, but it also has some weird charm to it. That it's fun to play. I don't love the bosses, but I kind of like, I kind of like what I got out of it. I just hope it doesn't get too difficult. They they really push at you that you, hey, you can drop this down to casual mode if you want. I was playing on the normal difficulty, not hard, the one right in the middle. It is annoying to have a game. I don't always want to play a game that's like a Souls-like. I don't want to have to lose progress, you know, 10, 15 minutes and keep going and going. The, the checkpointing here seems okay. I did find a little annoying in the third level. I, You could basically go high or low, and I went high after going low a little bit and wound up finding that, that that was the whole path I needed to take. And I didn't progress all the way low, so I probably missed out on a chest or something. And I, from what I found, there was no way to fast travel between save points, so... I'd have to run all the way back down, fighting all the enemies that I fought already, just to go see what I missed there. And that's that's a little annoying. So yeah, I I would check this game out. I, I'm going to wait for reviews to see what people are saying, because I'm not paying full price. Uh, granted, it's not a $70 game, it's a $60 game. But still, to me, this... I don't know, maybe this is a Game Pass game. I don't know, I, I hate to say it. Well, not really, but to me, this is a perfect Game Pass game. Wait a while, see if it shows up on Game Pass. If not, wait until it's like 20 bucks, 30 bucks maybe. But let me know what you thought of the Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, which is a mouthful to say, the demo for this game. Let me know if you're going to pick it up, what you thought. And until next time, I'll see you later.